Now let's say you want to store multiple values. So if you have, let's say, two values or four values, we can create variables, right? So let's say you got uh, four values, you got variable uh, A, B, C, D, and then you're able to store it. But what if you want to store a lot of values in one place? How will you do it? Then you will say, hey, we have talked about it. We have talked about list. We have talked about double. And we can do those things there. So we can store all the values or multiple values in a, in a list. But here's a problem. When you talk about list, list supports multiple type of data. So you can have integers, you can have string, you can have characters. Uh, but you will say, hey, that's an advantage, right? See, that's an advantage, yes. You can store different type of data in one place. But when you perform operation on that data, so let's say if you want to work with integers, you perform arithmetic operations. When you work with string, maybe you want to fetch a particular character or a you want to slice the characters or string. and Different type of data will have different operations. But if you have everything in one list, how what operation you're going to perform? So that's that's a problem. Second is when you work with list and when you have multiple values, all these values are scattered. They're not stored at one place or not in sequence. And whenever you want to perform operations which is time consuming, uh, the major part will be going and searching for the values here there. And to solve this problem, both this problem, we got a concept called Array. Now, array is not something new to Python. It's there in other languages as well. But Python tried to make it simple if you want to use array. If you want to do some complex operations with arrays or if you want two-dimensional array or something very complex, that's where you can use a library in Python called NumPy. And that's why if you have heard about uh, machine learning and AI, they do talk about NumPy in Python. But we are not doing that now. We are focusing only on inbuilt array. So how do we create that? First of all, let me create a file. I will name this as arraydemo.py. And if you want to use array, as I mentioned before, it's a module. So as a module, you have to basically import it first. So I can simply say import array, but then array has a lot of stuff inside it, which I want to use in this code. Uh, so I'm going, I'm going to get everything from there. So I will say from array, import i can import array or i can import everything from it and i need to disable my copilot or at least no it for some time and now if you jump to array you can see it has a lot of things for first of all it's a module and don't get scared by looking at everything and we are not going to discuss everything here but let me give you a thing so basically you can see we have types here now the first problem i was talking about list support different type of data in one list, but in array, you can create array of different types, but one array will have only one type. And you have to define that type at the start. So you can define a type like this. You can say I want characters because B represents byte, which take one character. You can say H for short. You can say I for integer, L for long. Then we also got F for float values, F or D. Now here, if you talk about this small I, it is for signed integer. Capital I is for unsigned integer. So if you want to store negative values, uh, you, you use I. If you want to use the positive values, you can use capital I. Uh, so when I say small uh, negative, we can also have negative and positive because you will get the signed integers. So those are the types we have to mention. Next, with the array, you can perform different operations. So let's say you can perform, uh, you can create a new array. Then you can create, you can use append to add value at the end. Uh, you can also use buffer info to get the size of the array. Then we have uh, count for counting. Then we can insert the value. We can pop the value. We can remove the value. We can convert the array into a list. So we got so many options here to work with. So let's do that. In fact, we are not going to use all, but let's see what you, what you can do. So let me create an array here. And I can say error one. That's my array here. Equal to. Now, how do we create an array? Of course, I want multiple values. I can just put that in a square bracket. So let's say the values are this, some random values. Now, when you have these values, I want to know this type of it. So I can say print type and I can print the type of ARR1. And what do you think if I run this, what will be the type? Is it array or will it be list? Now, why I'm saying is, is list because we have done this before. So if I say demo.py, it is list, but I want an array, right? Now, we don't have any special symbol for the array, but array is a module. So it has some functions using which you can create this array. So the function or the constructor, again, we'll talk about constructor later, but we got this array here. Just pass the list and your job is done. Let's see if it is really working. 
uh, no, there's a problem here. The problem is it says array argument one must be Unicode character, not a list. Because we are passing a list here. What it's expecting as a first argument is the Unicode character. Now you will say, hey, what's that Unicode character? Remember that I, B, H we talked about? That thing we have to mention here. And this will define what type of data you're going to have in this array. Now you can't have any other type here. So if you say 5.5 and if you run this, it will not feel good. It will say float object cannot be interpreted as integer. So you have to make sure that everything is integer here. And with that, no problem. And the type is array. Nice. I don't want to print the type now. I want to print the values of it. And we can do that easily. So I can just remove the type and I can just render this. And you can see it is printing array. Uh, then it is printing the type of it, which is integer. And then it is printing the values. Cool. So this array is working. But you know what? I want to print only the values here. One thing you can do, you can convert this into a list and then you can print it. So that's something you can do. And this will print only the values in the least format. Uh, but what if you want to print this one by one? In that case, remember when you have a collection and if you want to fetch value one by one, we can use loops. And the best loop to do that is a for loop. So I will say for n in error one and we can print the value n like this. Okay, now what will happen is it will print the value one by one. As simple as that. Cool, right? Uh, okay, this is working. What else we can do here? So we got other operations as well, which we can do. Maybe I want to print the uh, I want to print the buffer info of this. So I can say print and arr one dot buffer info, and let's see what it prints, and then we'll discuss what it is doing. So you can see this is your address, and this is your size. Okay, that's what you can get in the buffer info. So yeah, that's it from this. In the next video, we'll see some more methods or functions inside array and we'll have some fun.